Well, you had three albums with Men at Work and, and ten solo albums. So uh, let's let's but, hear. I'm sorry. But, go ahead. Yeah, no, it's it's just that that's the, the people seem very happy with that, you know, because a lot of people have come to see me now. They've been coming to see me for years, so they don't particularly care about the Men at Work. I mean, they don't mind it. Yeah. But it's not what they're there for. The, there's probably about maybe uh, there's about maybe uh, 10 songs now that people know like where they I play a song and they go oh I know that song right, right. about half of them are Men at Work songs and about another about half of them are new songs what yeah. I call new songs yeah so um, it's not you know it's not bad it's kind of there's a nice there's a balance yeah. there without me even kind of being that conscious about it yeah it, it just happens know? yeah exactly yeah, it just happens. Well, let's, let's hear a tune now and then uh, after that let's talk about <coughs> We'll give a tease. We'll talk about Scrubs, Garden State, and a few other things. Uh, we're in the studio with Colin Hay right here in 88.3. All right. I came into your store. I'm not buying anymore. So much for my will. Until the day I die. I will love you still I walked in through your door I swore I wouldn't anymore So much for my word Till the seas run dry I will love you still I want to love you like there's no tomorrow If not I can pretend and play the highlights Or I can lock the door and turn the closed sign But maybe I should let a little time pass I look down at the floor But I'm not crying anymore So much for my tears Till the day I die I will love you still And I don't know what to say But I like it more that way A penny for your thoughts That I'm more at pay Just to hear you say mm -hmm. I want to love you like there's no tomorrow If not I can pretend And play the highlights Or I can lock the door And turn the closed sign But maybe I should let A little I came into your store But you don't work there anymore Beautiful song. I came into your store on the CD, American Sunshine. That's Colin Hay live in our studios right here at WGWG. Give me a little background on that song, Colin. Well, I was, uh, I was slightly panicking because I was in Nashville and I was recording for two days with these musicians that I had just met and it was the night of the first day and uh, we'd recorded everything that I had because they were so fast and such skilled musicians that I had three songs and we, they did them and so I rec we recorded an old song that I had just to kind of, you know, to make up for the 
because we had some time on our hands. I said, oh, well, let's do this one. I've always wanted to record this with the band. I've only ever done it acoustically. So we recorded the song called Love is Innocent. And then I had to go back to the hotel. And the next day I had to, you know, another day of recording, but I had, I had nothing finished. So I had to scurry back to the hotel and finish off. So I had a mini disc full of ideas and half finished things. So what I had was, I came into your store. I'm not buying anymore. That's all I had. So um, right. I had to finish that. So I finished that. You know, it was one of those things where I just ca- kind of carried on from there. And um, and the tune kind of wrote itself in a way. And I was very happy with it. And it's just a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a dark little song in some ways, you know, because it's about a guy who's having, a, who's having a, a love affair with this person he's never met, he's right. never talked to. Yeah, he's, he's having it all himself in his own, <laughs> in his own brain, <laughs> and that's sometimes uh, the best kind for a lot of people. So mm. there you go. Uh, you you mentioned the mini disc. Is, is that kind of your approach to, to dropping in ideas? Do they just come to you fluid? The tune, the words? Uh, no, it, sometimes they come quickly, and but I find that like the mini disc is it's a horrible little medium. You know, it's 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 the quality is terrible. Uh, you know, it's it, the speaker that I use to record onto is is sounds distorted, right. you know. And uh, but I find that I just like using that because all I do is hit one button, right? And record, <laughs> okay, yes. so it's good to get ideas yeah. down, you know. Because I've got a studio in my house, but I find if I go downstairs to the studio and I turn the machines on and I go, oh, I'll try and write a song. And I turn all the machines on, turn all the all the technology on that um, there's so many different ways you can go with grooves and rhythm tracks and whatever, however you, however you want to record, I just end up with 20 or 30 ideas that okay. I haven't finished. So when I go down there, I try and not turn on any machines. I just try and write a song like I used to, which is to finish it on stumble around on guitar till I find an idea and then come up with the, come up with the lyrics. Because then if, you, if, cause if you've got the lyrics, you know, you can play the song. Right. You know, even if, if you invite musicians up like there's a book written by Jeff Emmerich who recorded the Beatles all the, all the great Beatles albums from Reco- Revolver on and he worked with a, a famous engineer called Richard Lush who was a beautiful uh, recording engineer and he said something in that that was really interesting he might have said it recently but he said you know if you're going to record a song and you're going to record it live with some musicians don't record the backing track you know where the, the musicians come up and you just lay down the drums bass and guitars and stuff it's like sing the song so that you're actually performing the song. You're always going to get a better result, and I, and I think I believe that. Yeah. Because well, otherwise you're just singing, kind of. You're, otherwise you're just playing a rhythm track, and there's kind of some there's something missing, you know. So. Yeah, you you have a lot of for you. Uh, what I've noticed with your songs, there, there, and we mentioned this before when you and I talked. There's this autobiographical feel, but there's also this creative fiction feel popping out of uh, some of your work as well. Yeah, well, there's, there's not a lot of them that are really particularly autobiographical, um, but the they start off, I mean, they're all, they always have, they always have, I mean, they always have elements of yourself in them because you're writing them, so they, they have your, you know, part of your DNA in them right, or something, right, you know, yeah. so there's no point in trying to, trying to hide that. But then songs take over sometimes, they have their own life and they go, well, I want to be about this, and they, be, they end up being about different things, and or else they're about, you know, people you know, or they're also just, yeah, like they're 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 fictionalized characters, which which seem very real, which is really the the whole um, idea of the, you know, creating that illusion, if you like, you know. Do, do you remember one of the strangest places you ever got an idea for a song? Uh, <laughs> um strange places well or strange yeah, uh, yeah well there was i tell you where I got an idea for a song was in the dressing room of um when i was playing at the uh the world cup in uh in munich in what year was that was that 2006 the world cup i went to i went to play at the australia brazil game okay and i was uh, i was waiting to go on to play and uh i was i was in the dressing room it was really 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 noisy because there's like 80,000 people in the stadium but I got an idea for a song and I managed to kind of remember it and because uh, that was that was an odd thing you know yeah with, with so much chaos going around but yet this idea 